In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. Konami's Silent Hill series is one of the most popular survival horror franchises of all time. Its terrifying legacy spans dozens of video games, films, comics, and novels. While the characters and storylines may change with each new entry in the series, one aspect always remains the same. They all take place within the eerie town of Silent Hill. The town of Silent Hill and its many grotesque inhabitants are thankfully based in fiction. But is it possible that Silent Hill could have a real-life counterpart? The answer is yes. So naturally, we went there. This is Centralia, Pennsylvania. I think this will work now. Hey Travis, where Is are we it going? Still blue? We're going to Centralia. So yeah, myself, Tom, Sean, and my brother Ian came along for the trip. Oh, the news is so important. Oh, good thing I'm eating my cheeseburger at McDonald's while I watch the news. Oh, hey, there's my friend Tom. We all packed into the car and we started to make the drive towards Centralia. So what exactly happened in Centralia? And why would we want to go there? Centralia was once a thriving town, located roughly 100 miles north of Philadelphia. Well, it isn't very comfortable to live here anymore with the mine fire and the gases that we have to put up with. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Centralia was known as a mining town, as it was seated on top of a vast supply of coal. Mazes of mines were constructed below the homes of the town's residents. For years, Centralia was flourishing off of its ample supply of coal. Until the Great Depression hit, the coal industry never fully recovered from the Depression, and Centralia was no exception. However, the declining coal industry would soon be the least of Centralia's worries. In May of 1962, a fire began in the town's landfill. This fire soon spread into Centralia's vast network of mining tunnels, and it was never extinguished. The fires beneath Centralia still burn today. <laughs> coal! <laughs> From the Silent Hill world. On the way to Centralia, we first decided to stop at the nearby village of Burnsville. Because according to Google Maps, I know it's a bit of an ironic name. The village once had a population of around 70 residents, until it also became a casualty of the Centralia mine fires. I'm by the, bur the first bird that building. It's been nearly 60 years since the fires began, and Burnsville has long been evacuated and abandoned. There's not a whole lot left of the ill-fated village. The few structures that remain have since been reclaimed by nature and have been covered in graffiti something that will become a bit of a running theme throughout this video. Is that like one of those like uh, touch machines you see at bars? Yeah, I think so. Besides a few burnout structures and random garbage here and there, we didn't find a whole lot in Burnsville. Shall we go to Centralia? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. At this point, we felt that we saw everything that we needed to see, so we decided to walk back to the car and head over to Centralia. While we're on the way, let's dig a little deeper into Centralia's past and find out how it earned the unfortunate title of the real-life Silent Hill. The full scope of the damage that the landfill fire caused in 1962 wasn't immediately apparent to Centralia's residents. Throughout the 60s and into the 70s, several attempts were made to extinguish the fire. They had worked rather diligently, but not, apparently not diligently enough because the fire was not extinguished then and it's been downhill ever since. With all the efforts ending in failure, mainly due to budget restrictions, it wasn't until 1969 when residents truly began to feel the fire's effects. With a lingering smell of sulfur in the air, the people of Centralia began to experience constant nausea and headaches due to the increased levels of carbon monoxide. As the years went on, the flames continued to grow, and Centralia's problems only got worse. The ground became hotter, deadly carbon monoxide and smoke seeped into basements, and more potential solutions continued to fail. On Valentine's Day 1981, a 12-year-old boy was playing in his backyard when suddenly a 150-foot deep sinkhole opened up beneath his feet. 
The young boy fell into the hole that opened around him. Thankfully, he was able to cling onto the roots of a nearby tree until his cousin could pull him to safety. At this point, all hope for Centralia was lost, with experts saying that there is enough coal under the town to burn for 500 years. In 1992, Congress voted to buy out the remaining residents of Centralia and condemn the entire town. Before the fires began, the town had a population of 1,400 residents. Today, only 10 people inhabit the wasteland of Centralia. Welcome to Game Rats. I'm Travis. This is Tom. Sean's behind the camera. Today we're in Centralia, Pennsylvania, the town that Silent Hill was based on. We live here. Well, We, not we in, live here in the dirt. Not in Centralia. We live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Let's jump right in! After pulling off the highway and following some dirt roads, the first stop that we made was at one of Centralia's two cemeteries, which to our surprise was still well maintained. Before we had even left for the trip, I had read that there were some spots around this area where we might be able to see some smoke coming up from the ground. So we went off to try to find them. Are you sure it's still on fire? I'm not I ain't seeing no flames. Unfortunately, we didn't find anything like that here. All we found was this dirt bike trail. Oh, uh, he on X Games mode. So we got back in the car and decided to head towards the second cemetery in Centralia and explore a bit more of the surroundings. The few remaining buildings are actually functional. The majority are safely seated on top of a sheet of rock, so they are in no danger of the ground beneath them collapsing. This is Centralia's church. It still holds regular Sunday services. It's on top of a hill, overlooking what used to be rows of houses and businesses below. It's an incredibly eerie sight. One of the strangest buildings, just in the fact that it even exists, is the town's fire department. There's the fire department. And the one truck. <laughs> I think you can probably see the irony here. And finally, here is one of the three homes still standing in Centralia. Someone still lives there. It almost looks like it was once a duplex that was cut in half. Now back to the cemetery. We got a little lost on the way, probably in part due to our sophisticated navigation system, which is Tom's Pokemon Go account. Well, I mean, we got what we have here is we have nothing. There's nothing. The one silver lining to us losing our way is that we did actually make an interesting discovery. Is that a metal pipe? Yeah. Like a really yeah. fancy metal pipe? What is that? These pipes sticking up out of the ground actually have a very specific purpose. They're designed to be a ventilation shaft for the smoke and steam that's trapped underground. Although they weren't doing much of anything when we were there. Can you check it out quick? Yes. We finally made it to the dead end next to the second cemetery, and we decided to go out on foot. In our immediate surroundings, we found a few remnants of abandoned homes and some, uh, other tasteful graffiti. That's a big penis. Thank you for that observation, Sean. Next, we saw some trails that led into the surrounding woods, so we decided to see what we could find in there. Come on, we're going on an adventure! <laughs> Come on! No, I'll lead the way. I'll lead the way! I'll lead the way! Before we exhaust all of our energy, we continued deeper into the woods, and we found some interesting items here and there. You say he wants to make a sacrifice? Yeah, yeah, I got like this pointy thing. Ian, lay down. <laughs> Hey Ian, can you lay down real quick? Youngest first. Wow. Well, you think you can do some damage? Wow. You could kill a man with that. Ah! <laughs> Where are you going? What are you hunting for there, boy? Yeah. This is the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we still hadn't found any evidence of the fire burning beneath the ground. We kept searching until, well... Uh, and once again, we are stopped by a body of water, our worst enemy. An impassable body of water. Got this? Oh, man. That must be some kind of Guinness World Record or something. <sighs> Only here on Game Rats will you see anything like that. Buy our shirts. Yeah, we don't have any shirts. The final stop on our journey to Centralia was the former highway Route 61. Today, it's better known as Graffiti Highway. <laughs> Welcome to Centralia! Wait, I already did that. What should I do next? What should I say next? Before the fires, Route 61 used to act as the main road in and out of Centralia. What you're seeing here is what's left of it. The highway is cracked and damaged beyond repair. 
Mining tunnels beneath the surface caved in when their support beams were burned away. This caused the elevation of the road to shift. Rather than have to make continuous repairs to the highway, the government opted to construct a new Route 61 in a less dangerous area. And if you haven't figured out why it's called Graffiti Highway by now, this is it. Huh? Light screen. Like this? Yeah. Switch it in mid, two minutes in? Sure. No, I'm not gonna do that. It's actually become sort of a popular tourist destination. While we were there, we saw families with their kids throwing graffiti tags of their own on the road. We're on Rainbow Road, baby. There were some people racing up and down the highway on ATVs and dirt bikes. Pac-Man? I mean, come on, people. Yeah, look, there's a ghosty right there. Oh no, but then someone drew a penis going into its mouth. And of course, more of that, because that's everywhere in Centralia. Don't get me wrong, not all of the graffiti was this, um, phallic. The abandoned Route 61 stretches on for about a mile. And I swear there isn't a single inch of it that isn't covered by paint. Here are some of the highlights, presented in the only way I know how, in a dubstep montage. Son of a bitch, I hate turtles. After spending a bit more time on Graffiti Highway, we decided to end our trip to Centralia. We never did find any of the fabled smoke or flames coming up from the ground, but even without seeing that firsthand, it's easy to see how Centralia's history influenced the Silent Hill franchise, especially the films and the later games in the series. Thank you for watching our first journey into disaster tourism. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. You shouldn't go to places you shouldn't go to, but we did it anyways. <laughs> Unlike the ghost adventures, we find real evidence, hard evidence, that things that aren't there are actually there. So I'm just saying, I'm not throwing heat at him, but I'm, just, I'm, I guess I'm calling him out. I'm calling him out. Ghost adventures, you ain't shit. Cut, I'm out.